Do you want to use your time more effectively in your Etsy shop? Do you feel lost with your keyword research and just don't know if you're seeing results? There's so much tools, stats and data out there to help you that they can end up being a confusing time suck. So today I'm going to show you this one quick simple tool that it can actually do loads of easy research, help you make changes and immediately see if your changes are working. This is the E-Rank Rank Checker. I love this tool so much. In fact, it's how I first found E-Rank way back in 2016. Way back when, in the past, I used to experiment with keywords, find things that I thought were good and try them out in my listings optimize them for my shop and then wonder if I was ranking for them. So I would physically go on to Etsy and search for the search terms that I was trying to rank for and then scroll through that results page until I finally saw my listings. That is if that was before my eyes were too blurry to even notice my listings. If I was experimenting with a listing, it was super important for me to see before I made the change where my item was ranking and then after I made the change, if I'd made it better or if I'd made it worse and also to look at my other listings and see if the changes I'd made to this one listing had impacted any of them. And also I'm a bit of a graphs nerd so I like to see how they rank over time. Etsy tells us that new or relisted listings get a slight bump in the ranking and then fall away over time. So I liked to study this by checking minute by minute or hour by hour how they were dropping away in the ranking and I found this super important to know because more popular search terms might drop down quicker in the ranking and this would help me to know when I was planning planning out a range of items that I wanted to launch, when was a good time to launch the next one when the first one had dropped off the first page of search, when was a good time to list the next one, was it going to be in two hours time or in two days time? So yeah, I was sitting there in front of my computer scrolling away and making, making changes and then searching every 10 minutes for a large period of time sometimes. I am that nerd. So after doing this a bit and realizing how unscientific it was because I was quite often missing my listings if they were down in some far pages and I was tired out. So I googled some term or other to find out how could I find where my items were listing on Etsy and lo and behold E-Rank popped up or rather Etsy Rank at that time because this that was its name and Anthony's gonna kill me. I've even found what the old page looked like when I first joined the site. It's cute, isn't it? Over the years, the site has got more functionality and more tools with great additions like the Keyword Explorer and Keyword Lists. But the Rank Checker is still a firm favourite of mine that I come back and check often. And even this tool itself has got some added functionality over time, so there's even more that I can do with it. And it's even more super important because search engines have changed. Now, on most search engines, in most places online where they search, what people see when they're searching is going to be different for everyone. It tends to be dependent on the personalization to do with you. So where you're located, what you're interested in, what you've liked on Facebook in, in many cases, all these things are taken into account before the search engine shows you your results. And this is very much the case in Etsy. Even if you use a VPN, search incognito or get your friends to search for you, Etsy still personalizes those results. So to get an idea how good my SEO has been, to get an idea of how I'm ranking, we have to strip back a layer and get away from those personalizations. This means going back to the Etsy API. This is the interface that allows apps like eRank to get the data directly from Etsy. And Etsy tells us there are three steps that go into the ranking of an item on Etsy. There's three steps that go into that search engine algorithm. First step is query matching. This is just simply whatever the keyword a searcher, a buyer puts into that search box. The Etsy algorithm goes and searches all listings across Etsy and finds all of the ones that might be 
a match for that, that have the words somewhere in their title, tags and attributes and says, yes, those have the same words. This is a dumb algorithm. It has no understanding. It just puts them all together into a massive list and says, yep, I've found all of the listings that have those words somewhere. And stage two is the ranking. This is taking this massive list and sorting it into something a little more manageable, ranking it based on many factors that Etsy tells us, including the relevance. How relevant is your listing to what the buyer typed in? The more of an exact match the words that you typed in in the right order, the more Whatever the person puts in, if that's included exactly in your title and in one of your tags, then the more ranking power Etsy's going to give that item. Another factor is the listing quality. That is how that listing has been performing in the past for that keyword. How does it convert? How do people like it when they see it in that search? How many sales has it had? Another factor, recency. How old is it? Newer items do get a little bit of a boost up in the search. If your item's been sitting there for two months and nobody's really liked it, then Etsy's not going to like it that much either. Customer and market score. This is saying how satisfied the customer has been with your shop in the past, how good it is for them as a shopper, how good are your reviews and things like are your policies filled out. Basically, this is your trust metric to say to Etsy, if you show me to people and people buy from me, you can trust that I'm a good seller. Postage price is sadly a factor. That free shipping thing ain't going to go away anytime soon. And translations, depending on what language everything's written in and what language the customer searches in and how good the translation is. So with these matching the exact words and then these ranking factors, Etsy effectively makes a master list. It orders all the listings from one to 50,000 with the ones that it considers the best according to all these factors at the top and the ones that are not so important way down the bottom. And this master list is what the API gives to eRank. This is the list that we see when we're looking for rankings. And this is fantastic. Although it doesn't tell us exactly where we're going to show up for everybody, it tells us we're doing the right things. It tells us our SEO is on point. It tells us our shop and how we're dealing with our customers are all good enough. It tells us that we're matching that query well enough. So it's telling us, yep, we've done well compared to all the other items out there. And then every time somebody searches on Etsy, Etsy, the algorithm takes this master list and applies the personalizations to it. And this is a learning algorithm. It's trying to learn what items shoppers are more likely to buy. So based on your location and all the other factors, but it's looking at what did similar people do when I showed them this item? So even if it's looking at what did people logged into a VPN do when I showed them this item? And clever things are not only learning, they're experimenting. Because if an algorithm didn't experiment, then as we said, a lot of the factors here, well, the SEO and everything in a listing is going to stay the same unless you change it. But if items are shown on the front page and they get the sales because they're on the front page, they're going to keep getting more views, they're going to keep getting more sales and the front page would be static the entire time. So this third factor in the algorithm has to experiment sometimes and show some wild cards for a bit of time. So it might shuffle down the order and say, OK, well, that one was number one, but I want to see what happens if I try item number 50 at the front. So it'll throw up some wild cards. So basically, although something might be ranking really well on that master list, it could for a little while be showing up lower just because the algorithm saying, no, nope, I want to experiment with something else today and see if it's better. And if it's not better, then the thing that's number one on the ranking list will get put back up again because Etsy will go, yeah, I made an experiment. It didn't work. Let's stick back to what we know. So hopefully now you've got a little bit of an idea of what ranking is, the limitations of the rank checker, but also the awesomeness. But there's a whole lot more to this tool. Let's pop down to my computer and have a, have a close look at how I use this. 
So from my E-Rank account to get to the Rank Checker, all I click is Tools in the top menu bar and then Rank Checker. And I can add any shop I want. By default, it's going to show you your shop that you're currently working in from E-Rank. So this is on my main shop, Ben McFuzzy Lugs. So let's try some terms and see what we see. So, Needle Felty Dog. Okay, I'm ranking, but page four? Wow. Not only can I see where I'm ranking, but here we get a little free taste of some of the statistical data for this term. I can see the search volume, the amount of clicks, how much competition there is for this item. And so Needle Felty Dog, yeah, fairly low search volume, but it's not the most horrible term. But sometimes it helps to think outside the box for different terms than you would think of for your items. So individual breeds of dogs when I make dog sculptures. So let's look at Samoid. So yes, I'm on page two and actually it's a pretty good term with more people searching it and not too much competition. But when I look down at all the other listings ranking for that term, I'm very different. This might not be what people want when they're searching for certain terms. If you stand out, try and figure out what is the buyer intent when they're searching for something. In this case, if I'm offering to make a sculpture of a Samoid dog, then people searching for Samoid might well like it. Another thing to do when you're investigating how you think your items are going to fit in in here, look at all the other data you have, the price, how old the item is. Some things that I really like to look at here, first of all, if it's a really competitive keyword, I have a look and see, are there any dead new items here or items that stand out because they have particularly low views? This is telling me that potentially a new item could sneak into this slot could overtake the slot that the other listing is there and this is something I really work on when I'm aiming for a super competitive keyword. Although it's difficult to rank for are there other items that have managed to do it and they're not necessarily from shops that are any bigger than mine and they're not getting massive amount of views. If they can do it with some good SEO maybe I can do it too. And let's try some different terms. Cat lover's gift. That's got to be good, right? Not great term. There's some searches, but at least I'm on page two. I might get some sales, especially if the term is seasonal. These bookmarks do sell a lot more at Christmas. So this is possibly worth diving deeper into with the keyword explorer and seeing what the seasonal graphs for this. Cat bookmark. It's not great, but it might be a better term. It's specific and has some searches. And I'm on page one. Ranking number 11 here. Black Cat, I know that's got me some views from my shop stats. It's competitive, but there are a lot of searches. I'm not ranking for it at the minute, so maybe I could focus something on, on that. So let's have a look in my shop. Oh, I have one very poor optimized cat bookmark listing. Let's quickly change that based on what we've learnt here. So now I've got a title that's optimised for quite a few terms that I found here. Needle felting and cat lover's gift and black cat and cat bookmark. There's a whole heap of things that this quite short title could hit for. And if you're experimenting with this, then it's a good time to go back in and check the ranker to see where you're ranking. But I want to show a slightly different experiment because my Ben McFuzzy Lug Shop is rather old to say the least. I started that in 2008. So let's see what we can do with this with a brand new shop. So at the end of last year I started up a brand new shop and I'd found some keyword terms that I thought might be useful for it that were quite competitive that might be difficult for a brand new shop. And I did one of my usual strategies for launching a range of items. So not just launching one and hoping that it hit the search, knowing fine well when I launched one, it might reach the search and then slowly or quickly over time, it would drop down the search. So I just want to show you a few days of me listing several items so you get a feel of how this works. So in my brand new shop, 30 minutes after I created my first listing, I searched for one of the keyword terms I'd identified and I was trying to optimize for, which was custom dog portrait. 30 minutes in with my brand new shop, with its very first listing, 
This item was ranking on page one at rank 25. So I left that for the rest of the day, knowing fine well that that listing would drop down the rankings. And then on the second day, I launched my second item, aiming for similar keywords. And pretty much straight away, give yourself a wee time to make a cup of coffee for Etsy to find your listings. And my second listing for this Spaniel ranked on page one at rank 21. So even slightly higher up. And that original listing that I'd put in there, it had gone all the way down to page four, rank 182 by the point that this listing came out. So a little later, still on day two, I checked this listing again. And by this stage, without me having done anything else, this second listing had dropped all the way down to page four, ranking 149. So they drop like a stone. On day three, I added another listing and that listing went straight up into page one at rank 22. So it's hovering around the same place and that second listing that I'd published, it had gone all the way down to page four, rank 183, and my first listing was nowhere to be seen. So using the rank checker, I'm able to keep a track while I'm putting in these new listings in my brand new shop. I'm able to see how quickly they drop down the rankings, stick another listing in once I've lost my place on page one. So this means with a brand new shop for several days in a row, I was ranking on page one for a fairly difficult term. And I just wanted to do this to give a trial of that keyword to see if I'm spot in search for that keyword, if I'm doing well for that keyword, will I sell well? If it gets listed up there, will people want to buy my item? Because that drop out of page one is only because Etsy's given you a chance and you're not doing great. If on page one you start to make tons of sales, you know you've landed the perfect keyword in the perfect page. Now, at a brand new shop, it's a little more difficult to make sales. Obviously, I didn't have any reviews, I didn't have any sale history, so customers are a little more nervous about buying from a brand new shop but it certainly told me that for a fairly competitive keyword, using some ideas I was getting from the rank checker, I could keep my listings on page number one. So let me know in the comments, do you use the rank checker? What, do you, what parts of it do you use? Did you learn anything from me today or did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments and give everyone else's comments a read because they might have something to teach you as well. And I would like to remind you that although I also work for eRank, the videos on this YouTube channel are my own and are neither sponsored or endorsed by eRank in any way. I hope that helps and I'll see you next time.